Hello, uh, my name is Russ Yukin, ISU Extension Beef Specialist. I want to bring you another part of our series on feedlot facilities, this time looking at some of the economic aspects of feedlot facilities. Really, when we look at the economics, uh, we're going to think of it as kind of a two-part assessment. The first part is investment in facilities, a good investment. We won't spend quite as much time on that one. Uh, more time we want to spend on comparing facility types and the investment uh, related to those types of facilities and then the economic advantages one might have over another type. So as far as an economic assessment, when we look at if a feedlot facility is a good investment, we're going to be looking at profitability of cattle feeding, what the financial position of the operation is, are there other investment opportunities, and synergy with other parts of the operation would all be considerations determining if this is a good investment or not, primarily profitability of cattle feeding and how competitive that operation can be. Where we want to spend more time here is looking at uh, economic advantage of one facility type over another. Uh, we'll be considering several different things, the initial investment, the operating cost of those types of facilities, and then the outputs, the performance of the cattle, the manure value, and another input labor requirements that might differ from one type of facility to another. What we've developed is a calculator to help look at those inputs and compare outputs. We can put three different types of facilities into the spreadsheet. It will calculate a cost of gain for each type. Uh, there are several inputs that we need to put in there. The investment, the operation cost, and manure value would be key things that we'd be looking at as well as the performance. In addition to the cost of gain that we calculate for each type, this spreadsheet will do a annual income statement on the feedlot operation and that income statement then includes some calculations that look at return on investment and we'll show you that as we get into the spreadsheet. To find that spreadsheet you can just go to the Iowa Beef Center website iowabeefcenter.org. We're going to be using some of the information we put into the Beef Feedlot Systems Manual. We'll highlight that as we go through the spreadsheet and any of the extension beef specialists around the state who you contact information you can find at the website listed there, they can help you with this too. And again, just want to remind you there's other videos in the series that looks at facility types and other specifics like manure value and performance and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and kind of get into the spreadsheet, if we will. So here's our spreadsheet. and. We won't spend a lot of time going through every individual input, just wanted to highlight some of these. Uh, over here on the left hand side, we have some inputs relative to the weight of cattle and the prices, so we can look at income from that. Uh, our ration cost, uh, uh, when we start looking at feed cost of gain, uh, some of our vet and med and health cost here. Uh, we also outline in general, availability of nutrients in the manure and the cost per pound of nutrient as compared to fertilizer cost, uh, commercial fertilizer cost, bedding cost, labor charges. Uh, those would be general type of items that wouldn't differ between facility type, at least in the cost per unit. Here in the middle then we have our facility types and in this particular one we're going to compare an open lot with windbreak, a bedded confinement, and then a confinement with a pit and slats uh, with rubber mats. All 500 head facilities in this case and our investment per head is uh, based off information we collected for the feedlot manual. These would be kind of average prices for these types of facilities. Lots of variation around each one of these so we'd encourage you to use your own numbers but 400 head for an open feedlot uh, with windbreak up to 1200 head for a deep pit confinement with mats. With some assumptions of taxes and insurance and maintenance costs for these types of facilities and then land area required for that. We build in the financing options here, uh, how much of that we can actually borrow, how what the note length is and the interest rate that may differ between types of facilities. Uh, we've built in a section here where if we're going to go with some of the low interest loan programs or cost share or cost incentive programs. Uh, we can put part of that investment uh, into those. In this case, we're not doing any of that. 
We are using depreciation as the uh, annual cost here. In this case, we depreciated all these facilities the same number of years and figured each has a 0% salvage value. That may not be the uh, case in all situations, and we could vary that if we wanted to. Again, the spreadsheets, so you can do some analyzing on your own, use your own numbers. Uh, in this case, we're just using 100% occupancy. That may not be exactly the case either. Uh, probably wouldn't have the facility full all the time. Uh, we could look at differences, maybe an open lot. We're going to uh, not fill that uh, sometimes the year versus a confinement, so that can be analyzed. Performance of the cattle, we're using our assumptions from the feedlot manual here. 4% uh, difference in gain and feed efficiency uh, between an open lot and an open lot with a shelter or a confinement. So that's built into this. We didn't put any health care, uh, health cost, or morbidity numbers into this. If we did, that would uh, affect our adjusted daily gain and, and feed efficiency down here. We also are looking at um, uh, some information here on manure. Uh, we estimate a quantity of manure, either in tons or gallons per head, calculates the total annual based on our head numbers. And here is our assumptions that we have in the feedlot systems manual. Uh, nutrient concentrations in that manure either per ton or per thousand gallons. Very quickly here then we have some other non-feed factors. The main one I'd want to highlight here is the labor differences between these types of facilities. Again these would be our assumptions or estimates from our feedlot systems manual. The confinement building with the slats, deep pit, not having quite as much labor requirement uh, as the other types of facilities. But, again, use your own judgment and estimates on that. We don't have really good numbers to base some of that on. Those are certainly assumptions on our part. Other equipment and vet med, and miscellaneous charges, uh, also the rental rate for land. That would be, uh, we mentioned the acres for land before, and we're just putting in a rental rate for land there to, for a land charge. If we need other equipment or feed storage for a typical typical kind of facilities, we can put that in here. In this case, we're just adding some feed storage for each type of facility. And then what the financing for that other equipment or feed storage might be. Calculates our days on feed per turn. In this case, 100% occupancy, so it's full 365 days a year. And this would be our turns per, per year based off our performance information. Also build in an input section here where we could put in some custom feeding charges, either uh, charge per head per day and or a feed markup and how much the capacity is going to be custom fed if we wanted to look at that. So then just to go back up here and review some of the outputs we're getting, again we're going to look at the investment calculated on a total operation basis, our principal and interest payments, owner equity if we're financing part of that ourselves. Again, the depreciation charge is what we're basing the cost of the building on. We do this on a per head basis here as well, and then the land charge for the for the building is built into that. Again, our performance uh, information based off of the adjusted information on mortality and sickness. Here's our manure value infra calculated based off our nutrients and amount of manure. Bedding differences, labor differences are built in here. We have calculate interest on feed and on cattle. Our other investment for other equipment or feed storage that we might need and how that's going to be financed. And finally we come down here to a cost per pound of gain. Uh, in this case, we've broken the total cost into feed cost, non-feed variable cost, and non-feed fixed cost. For our open lot, our feed costs are a little bit higher because our performance isn't quite as good as on those in that open lot, that 4% difference that we talked about before. Our non-feed variable costs are very similar across all those operations. And then our fixed costs go up uh, mainly due to the uh, increased initial investment for the confinement facilities. When we go, go back up here and look at our total cost, the cost per pound of gain is certainly lower uh, with our feed costs that we have built into this particular example on the open lot and higher for the confinement.
Now if we go back and look at manure value, uh, certainly more manure value out of the confinement uh, with the pit. And when we factor that in, we get some very similar total cost of gain uh, with that manure credit factored in across those operations. We also go ahead and calculate a break-even price on the cattle, finished price with and without manure credit, and then a yardage charge for those types of operations. The other thing that we'd want to look at then is an income statement. Again, this is where the information we had in on, on cost of feeder cattle and what we can sell them for as feds comes into play. Calculate our annual income or cost and then our net return with and without manure value. Again, with the high cost of feeder cattle and projected uh, fed cattle price in there, uh, doesn't look like a very profitable operation, but that's what's driving that. And you can compare those three types of facilities again, an open lot, a shelter, a bedded confinement, and the uh, pit barn with confinement. Then down here, we've actually calculated some of the uh, ratios or return on equity, return on investment type numbers uh, that you can compare uh, not only one, one type of facilities to another, but also looking at other investment opportunities. Over here on this side, then, we've just done that all on a per head basis or on our annual income statement. So that's got the spreadsheet in a nutshell. Again, we've used the, those numbers that we factored in from our feedlot systems manual, manure values, uh, performance differences in the cattle, and what we could use as averages as far as in initial investments in those facilities. Your numbers may be different, and we'd encourage you to do some analysis with this spreadsheet. Again, you can go to the Iowa Bee Center and find it, or contact any of your beef field specialists. So thank you for your time, and hopefully this has been useful for you to analyze investment in feedlot facilities.